Hey, how you going? My name's Sam from Core Electronics and today we're going to be taking a look at ultrasonic sensors. Now, what are these things? Well, they're actually quite a simple device and they operate on a principle that's been around for quite a long time, or at least we've known about it for quite a long time. And that is, if you're ever in a, a big cave or a big area like an arena or something like that, you'll notice that when you clap or when you say something, you can hear it echo back to you and you might hear multiple echoes as well. And the bigger the space, generally, the longer it takes for you to hear that echo. And that's because a sound wave is simply a pressure wave. It's a mechanical wave that moves through the air and propagates through until it hits something solid enough to reflect it back. And when it does that, it reflects on all different kinds of things, and eventually it makes its way back to you, where it's picked up by your ears again. It's really, really cool. And that's actually a really common phenomenon. It happens everywhere around us. And so what, uh, what humans have done is created a sensor which uses that, that concept called an ultrasonic sensor. Now, it's quite simple. All the ultrasonic sensor does is it has two little speaker-like things that you can see. Uh, and one is a transmitter or an emitter, and the other one is a receiver. And the emitter will uh, create a ping, sort of just like a sonar pulse, which will, uh, will propagate through. And then the receiver's job is simply to listen for when it gets that ping back. And the interesting thing is that sound traveling through air moves at approximately 340 meters per second. It's possible to break the sound barrier, you know, uh, jets, really high performance aircraft will do that and you hear a sonic boom. But for things like, you know, you hear sound and you think it's instantaneous, but it actually takes a while to travel. So if I'm holding uh, the ultrasonic sensor this far above the table, the emitter, would send out a ping, a series of, of signals. Now, this sound is actually really, really high. It's called ultrasonic for a reason, not just sonic, ultrasonic. Um, and what this means is ultrasonic is a frequency beyond which the human ear can't pick up, it can't hear it. Um, it's so high that you, know, you, you can't detect anything that's happening, but it is exactly that. It's a sound wave, a pressure wave moving through the air. So if I hold it here, this wave gets emitted, propagates through, would hit this table and would bounce in all different directions, but part of that reflection would make its way back to the receiver. Now, the receiver would know the time that the ping was sent out, and then it would also be able to measure that time between the, when the ping was sent out and when it receives the ping. Now, knowing the speed of sound, it can quite easily deduce the time that, sorry, the, uh, using the time that it took, it can deduce the distance between itself and whatever it reflected off, which is really, really cool. Quite simple, and quite a simple sensor. You can see there, it's just got two, uh, you know, two, two speaker-like things, some circuitry on the back to control that, and you've got four pins here. You've got voltage, ground, trigger, and echo pins. Trigger and echo pins do uh, what they say, one is for emitting and one is for receiving and using a fairly simple library. We can easily control these with any board of your choice. Today, we're gonna to be using Arduino. Um, any Arduino compatible board will work with this. I've actually got a Teensy on board and the library is called the New Ping Library. Now, as I said, any platform, Raspberry Pi, Particle, uh, what have you, will have a library that will work with these. They've been around for ages, really simple to use, but we're gonna be using the New Ping Library. So. All you need to do today is grab yourself an Arduino board. As I said, I'm using a Teensy 3.2. Any Teensy board, any Arduino, anything that will work with the Arduino IDE is compatible. Now, I've got a simple breadboard setup going on here. I've got two LEDs with resistors going to ground, current limiting resistors that are being controlled by the, by the Arduino. Now, something to take note of is that this device is a five volt device. So I'm using the VUSB pin, which taps onto the five volts from the USB uh, supply and powers the device and the good thing is is that the TNC 3.2 is 5 volts tolerant meaning it can accept 5 volt signals on certain pins however if you are using a different device be sure to make sure that it is 5 volt tolerant or that you're using a logic level converter check out our logic level conversion tutorial for more info on that but i've got this wired up and i'm going to put it into the breadboard here so this particular ultrasonic sensor is called the hc dash SR04. It's dirt cheap, pick it up um, for a couple of dollars. Uh, it's not going to set you back much at all. But bear in mind, there are different types of ultrasonic sensors. This one is fairly accurate. I think the resolution is about uh, three, three mil, 0.3 per centimeter. And so it, it does quite well. But having said that, you can get more expensive ultrasonic sensors, ones that cost upwards of $100, which are super precise, super accurate. But just for getting a simple distance reading, uh, this one's going to do the job just fine. So wire up your breadboard. We've got the circuit diagram 
down here, as you can see. So you'll need the ultrasonic sensor, uh, the Arduino board, a few LEDs, some resistors, some jumper wires, uh, and away you go. Now, the code for this is really quite simple. I'll go to the Arduino IDE. Now, we've got our library inclusion, some definitions, so you define the trigger pin and the echo pin and the maximum distance that you would like it to receive. Uh, I've got some LED definitions and a low distance, which is we're going to use as a trigger. And we're just gonna make a simple distance trigger. So when something comes in between uh, the ultrasonic sensor and whatever it was measuring, say, let's say it triggers within 10 centimeters, then our low distance would equal 10. We're gonna be measuring in centimeters. Initializing uh, serial so we can get a read output of the sensor. So let's, uh, let's connect this up and we can get cracking. So, uh, any, any, any USB port will be fine for this. Use. To use this one. Alright, now, be able to see that I'll have to bring this a bit closer because you can't see. There we go. Cool, cool. So you can see that I've got a blue light and a red light. Now I'm going to prop it up on something. Uh, and the reason for this is that from where the, uh, the emitter uh, is sort of propagating that sound from, it has a 15 degree angle of um, like a working angle where it will emit that uh, goes out into a cone shape. And so the reason for this is, yeah, it's not a direct line of sight. And this is interesting because if I were to put it down on the table, for example, it would actually pick up that table, which isn't uh, it, you know, isn't what we want. So putting it up on a higher surface just allows us to ignore that flat object. Now the code here is really simple. We just uh, we compare the sonar dot ping uh, underscore cm. That's getting the ping result in centimeters. We compare that to uh, to a preset distance. In this case, low dist the variable. And if it is shorter than that, so if it's within ten centimeters, then we'll light up the red LED. And you can see that the uh, Red LED lights up nicely. Where we go, dead easy. Ultrasonic sensor working nicely and you could really use this to create anything for collision detection, um, object avoidance, whatever it is. Uh, something to keep in note is that this particular ultrasonic sensor has a minimum operating distance of three centimeters. So anything shorter than two centimeters and it's gonna return. I found it returned between four and five centimeter and zero centimeter. Um, increments, but they weren't reliable, of course. So if you hold it here, it's actually not going to operate correctly until you get, you know, uh, just outside of that range. And there we go. And if you, I use just my fingers, for example, you can see that it doesn't operate super reliably. And that's because ultrasonic needs a really solid surface to bounce back. So my fingers, there's quite a lot of air gap between that it might uh, miss that uh, that sound wave reflecting upon. But if I use a flat hand, it has a nice large surface to reflect on. Something to keep in mind. And the big benefits of ultrasonic sensors is that unlike infrared uh, distance sensors, things like smoke and dust aren't going to cripple them. They can still measure through that. However, soft materials, cloths, fabrics, uh, things like that can cause some issues because they're soft acoustically. They don't have a really hard reflection. That's why when you're in a bathroom, uh, for example, with lots of tiles, uh, it's really echoey because the sound waves reflect really well against that hard surface. But things like foam and carpet uh, don't reflect that well. So yeah, that's it guys. That is our simple project with uh, some, some really simple code. The library's doing all the work there of using an ultrasonic sensor, ultrasonic sensor perhaps, with Arduino. Uh, again, any platform will work. This is just a dirt cheap sensor. It works really well for these kinds of projects. Uh, yeah, grab one, have a play around with it and you'll love the opportunities it uh, gives you for collision detection, object detection, uh, things like that, whether it's an automated robot or not. So that's it for today guys, have some fun and happy making.